Um, good afternoon. Um, it's an honor to be here, um, especially um, the very special event, the celebration of the 20th um, anniversary of the Epic Foundation. I'm very, very glad to be part of it. So um, today, um, I would like to um, discuss with you the uh, big challenges facing us and the promise in neuroscience. So um, the neuroscience community at MIT studied the complexity of the brain with a multidisciplinary approach incorporating biology, genetics, chemistry, engineering, and computational methods. Um, so, um, and we ask the most important questions in neuroscience because there's, so, there's still so many things that we don't know. For instance, today, we still don't know how and why we can think, learn, and remember. Nor do we understand the biological properties of happiness, anger, or the consciousness itself. And from the understanding of the brain, how do we combat neurological disorders that affect our memory, that attack our mood, or attack our sanity? Today, there's actually very little a physician can do to people suffering from a variety of neurological disorders. Although we have drugs that can alleviate the symptom of um, schizophrenia or bipolar disease, our knowledge about the biology of these disorders is extremely incomplete. On the other hand, although we already know a, big, a great deal about the genetics of um, neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, but there are no effective drugs that can treat these diseases. We cannot cure brain diseases, not yet, not until we can understand the underlying biology and can come up with strategies that can repair the brain circuit and can stop the death of brain cells or neurons. So Alzheimer's disease is increasing at an alarming rate. And the biggest risk factor for Alzheimer's is age, and we are getting older. The elderly population in Taiwan, those people who are over the age of 65, has grown by about 4.5% every year for the last 10 years. This population of people have a rate of dementia for over 5%. And right now, there are really no drugs, no effective drugs that can treat these diseases. And there's not even drug that can slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease. And neurological disorders as a whole are becoming more prevalent so unlike every other major cause of deaths or disabilities, such as heart disease or cancer, which as a group has decreased over the last 50 years, but the incidence of neuronal diseases, such as Alzheimer's, has risen by almost 50%. Millions of people in the world suffer from neurodegenerative or psychiatric disorders. And for most of the world's population, these people suffer from a lifetime of pain and isolation, or they are not able to remember even the names of their children. And they can also um, be the prey of hallucinations and delusions, or they can be affected by um, paralysis permanently. The good news is that in the last decade or so, there are um, several key revolutionary technological advances that promise to improve our understanding of these disorders and provide hope 
for therapeutic intervention. So um, these new technologies include genome-wide association study, or GWAS, induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPS cells, and neurostimulation. And we at MIT are at the forefront of all of these technology breakthroughs. So GWAS, since the human genome was solved in 2003, and the reference points in the genome known as the hub map were made, it became possible to compare the minute differences in the genome between thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of individuals with or without the disease or between parents and children to detect genetic markers that are associated with the disease. This is known as genome-wide association study. To date, GWAS studies have provided very important clues to the complex neurological diseases, such as autism, schizophrenia, and bipolar disease. Another technology induced pluripotent stem cells. So with the advance in the stem cell research, it has raised the possibility of replacing the damaged brain cells with corrected ones from the same patient. So induced pluripotent stem cells now can be made from skin cells of any patient, and they can be induced to become brain cells or neurons. And they are actually quite straightforward to make. This is a brief um, explanation of how iPS cells can be made. A simple skin biopsy can be taken from a patient, and the skin cells can be cultured in the petri dishes, and then they can be transformed into a pluripotent stem cell using various genetic factors. And these um, stem cells, they can be maintained indefinitely in the petri dishes, or they can be frozen down. And most importantly, with defined factors in the media, the stem cells can be induced to become the brain cells or neurons. Now, these cells can be used for multiple purposes. For one, they can be used to perform um, research to provide better understanding of the disease. Or they can be used for drug screening for therapeutic um, purposes. And lastly, these cells actually can be directly corrected using genetic technology. Um, and then the corrected cells can be transplanted back into the brain of the patient to restore normal function. And at MIT, there are several laboratories that are absolutely at the forefront of this very exciting new technology. And then I would like to spend a couple of minutes to tell you about neurostimulation. So neuronal circuit in the brain operates electrically. Thus, using electricity or light to activate brain cells can bypass the damaged circuit and restore normal function. There are three new avenues for stimulation. This include optogenetics using light, or deep brain stimulation using electricity, or even using ultrasound. And the advantage of using neurostimulation as opposed to the traditional medication using drugs is that they don't have the risk of side effects that are traditionally associated with drugs. Moreover, um, they can specifically target the damaged brain area, and they can be turned on and off at will. So let me um, give you some example of how it works. So scientists at MIT, in collaboration with others, have succeeded in engineering cell surface protein that can respond to light to activate brain cells. So um, 
in this um, short movie, I'm going to tell you a mouse have this engineered protein inserted in their brain. Then a fiber optic can be inserted into the brain of this mouse. And this fiber optic is connected to a simple light source, such as an LED. And so one can activate a particular brain circuit with a light, like this mouse. Can you replay the movie, please? So you can see that the behavior of this mouse can be specifically controlled by the light. Normally, a mouse will wander in an open arena, but then once the light is turned on, you can see that the locomotion of this mouse is drastically altered. And then when the light is switched off, the mouse will go back to its normal behavior. Okay. So a remote control mouse, of course, is fun. <laughs> However, <laughs> the exciting news is that this technology is now has been seriously considered to be applied to certain neurological disorders such as blindness or movement disorder. And in the next slide, I'm going to give you an example how it has been applied to blindness, at least in a mouse model, and has been shown to be very effective. So in this short movie, I'm going to show you a mouse model for a common eye disease with progressive blindness. And this is because um, the retina cells of these mice are damaged. So again, we can insert this engineered cell surface protein to the retina of these mice and then apply light to activate the cells. So I'm going to first show you this mouse before um, the light treatment. So you can see that in a maze, this blind mouse uh, cannot even recognize the light source. Okay, so it really has very damaged vision. But after the light treatment, you can see the mouse can easily detect the light source and swim toward the light. So the blindness is effectively um, cured. So right now, um, we are very actively um, collaborating with human physicians to um, apply this technology to the human patients. Next, I would like to talk about um, deep brain stimulation. So this involves inserting an electrode into a particular part of the brain and um, applied electrical stimulation to activate that part of the brain in human patients. And this has been shown to be particularly effective in patients with severe movement disorder, such as Parkinson's disease. And there are certain patients suffering from Parkinson's disease that do not respond to medication. So this is an example of a patient with very severe movement disorder and have not responded to um, medication. Okay. So this is the patient, its movement before deep brain stimulation treatment. And then I'm going to show you a very short movie clip after deep brain stimulation treatment. This really has produced miraculous result. The movement is almost back to almost normal level. So, um, so this is very exciting. And um, we are now trying to better understand the mechanism of deep brain stimulation. So one can implement less invasive um, technology, such as ultrasound stimulation. That doesn't really require a surgery. So um, in conclusion, um, what I would like to say is that um, brain diseases are difficult and debilitating. Um, and usually, uh, with the disease, it requires extensive care, and um, it also imposes considerable stress on the family members and the society as a whole. And the treatment will be complex, and there's no doubt about that. But um, with the exciting new technologies now being developed at MIT and at many other places, I think this really um, allows us to hope for a future, hopefully a near future, where um, we can treat brain diseases as readily as um, infection, heart disease, or cancer. Thank you very much for your attention.